Here we go. And we're joined on Absolutely Famous today by uh, Chiefs midfield back, uh, or backline star actually, on the eve of Friday's competition opener between the Chiefs and the mighty Crusaders in Christchurch, Alex Nankable. Alex, uh, welcome to Absolutely Famous. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, mate, and I bet you're as excited as I am, if not more. Yeah, cheers, John. Yeah, I am actually. Um, Pre-season tends to drag on a little bit, um, so it's awesome when you start getting into games and um, the weeks start to kind of be more focused around preparation and the weekend rather than getting slogged and running around the footy field. So, no, nah, it's good. It's really exciting. Yeah, so, you know, your, your pre-season went all right results-wise. Do you, do you personally get much out of out of that? You just fine-tune? Yeah, I think fine-tuning, um, definitely seeing how stuff works um, in terms of our structure on attack and mostly on attack um, and then just kind of nutting out, like you said, fine-tuning and nutting out things that we can um, grow on um, heading into the season. So definitely not the complete package, but it does give you an idea of kind of where the game, where your game's at um, and things like that. So, And it look, by the looks of it, no serious injuries pre-season? No, very lucky. So the boys have um, scraped through well. I think there's just the ones that have already been injured um, kind of coming into this season. Um, that are still there, but we've actually got a really healthy squad, and um, it's probably it's generally the depth that gets you through kind of later on. So um, yeah, we're very lucky at this stage of the season. Of course, you're up against the best, one of the best teams in the history of club rugby worldwide, the Crusaders at their fortress in Christchurch. But um, I don't think you guys would be daunted. You're probably one of the few teams that actually know how to beat them. Yeah, well, we we. Did it last year, um, and I think in that semi-final, a few things we did better, like a, just the execution and whatnot. Um, we could have actually given them a run for their money in that semi-final too. So the boys have um, got a lot of belief, and um, we're actually really excited to go down because playing the champs at home first round really sets the standard for, for the season and w where we're at. So, um, no, it's an awesome opportunity. It's a bit of a homecoming for yourself and your midfield mate, uh... Anton Leonard Brown, you're both Christchurch boys originally. Yeah, we are. Yeah. It's a, it's always um it's always nice going back. I haven't oh, geez, since I left to Tasman when I was eighteen, I haven't spent heaps of time there in the last few years. So um, lots of familiar faces and um I played a lot of rugby against the guys in the Crusaders, so it's always cool going um and exciting going down and playing them down at home. Oh, it'd be fantastic. And of course, you've got a really good, impressive playing roster this year in the return of the Mercurial Day, uh, Damien McKenzie, I think he's playing first five on uh, Friday night. How good's that to have him back? Yeah, it's awesome. Eh? Um, we did really well with him without him last year, but I think having that other year as a group together and then um, bringing him back into the mix is, is going to be huge for us. Um, for such a 27 year old to have the experience he's already had at um, international level and at Super Rugby is. Um, yeah, you can't really buy, buy that round the place too often, so um, it's going to be awesome for the group to have him back. Well, he's a rare talent, isn't he? Because, he, I mean, I don't even think he knows what he's going to do some of the time, and that's a, as big a plus as anything to me. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Um, let alone your op opposition not knowing what he's going to do. Sometimes it's quite hard for us on the field to um, figure out what he's going to do sometimes, but I think that's, what, that's why he's so good. Um, it's just so unpredictable, and he just reads the game so well. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Cool to be playing alongside him. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun, I'd imagine. And, of course, looking at your playing roster, you've, I'll give you some examples to the uh, listeners who's in there. Broger Retallick, Sam Kane, Sam Asoni, Takiaho, Peter Gus, Sua Kula, um, Atu Moli, Tupo Vai, Luke Jacobson, Josh Lord, Angus Tarvo. Not they're all not on deck first game, but that's a hell of a good start up front for you. Yeah, it's massive, and um, I think at this level, like a lot of the games can come down to the dominant set set piece, and um, if you get a good platform there, and then also the breakdown, um, and they go forward, that those big boys get you. So um, yeah, like those names are star studded, and any team would be lucky to have them. So um, hopefully they can set a good platform for us. I'm sure they will, um, and then we can we can create some opportunities off them. I know. Um... Dave Rooney used to have the boys fired up uh, to niggle the Crusaders and get stuck into them, and and I uh, get the feeling Clayton McMillan's off the same old uh, one of the chips off the same block. Your head coach. 
Yeah, very similar. Uh, very similar. We haven't talked too much about that this week. It's more just around kind of worrying about us as a group and um, focusing on the stuff that we're gonna we're gonna show on Friday night. So there will definitely be some of that, just with the rivalry that it is. Um, I don't think they like playing us, and well, they probably do in, in terms of like the rugby and the, um, the physical contest that it's gonna be. But um, yeah, I think that's just gonna naturally come with the occasion of the two teams going at it. Yeah, you won't be too sad to know that uh, Sam Whitelock's not playing for them on um, Friday night. That'll uh, uh, Mitch Dunn, she's coming for him. He's not a bad player either, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, Mitch is a good player. I, um, I was in the Crusaders Academy with him for a couple of years. He's a good man. Um, but yeah, he's been in that system for a long time, so they um, they know how to nail their role and they will just step up and probably fill, the, fill Sam's shoes pretty well. But um, yeah, Sam's been massive for them the last few years and obviously he's still going strong at, um, after the amount of rugby that he's played um, since he's, he's been around. So yeah, they'll be big, big loss for them, but I'm sure they'll just have another guy stepping into his shoes. Yeah, uh, Sam Kane, of course, he came home injured from the All Blacks too. How, how's he fronting up? He, he's been knocked about from pillar to post in recent years with injuries. Is, is he uh, scrubbing up pretty well at the moment? Yeah, Sam looks really good, actually. Um, just just like normal. Um, I think that's just the nature of his position and how he plays the game. He's physical and throws his body in line for the team. Um, works really hard, so... And that's just going to come with the kind of style he plays, but yeah, no, he's looking really good. Um, haven't noticed anything, so looking forward to him leading from the front Friday night. Yeah. So, how do you beat the Crusaders? I mean, you know, you've got to you got to have a bit of luck. Well, they have to have a bit of luck to beat you too. But what what is the key as far as you're concerned on uh, Friday? I think the last few years it's. Um, it's come down to those kind of moments and executing executing those. Um, if we can get um, good set piece um, and kind of nullify that, like they love to go to the line out and have their specials and their driving ball. Um, so if you let them in their 22, then it's going to be an issue. So I think discipline, um, we've got to nail that, um, give them kind of no easy um, free rides into our 22. Um, and then I think just playing our game and like trusting it and then just executing. Um, we created a lot of opportunities in that semi final last year and we have in the past when we played them, um, but we haven't haven't quite finished some of them off and those kind of key moments, if we can nail them, then that's going to change the dynamic of the game. Um, so you yeah, we've, we've talked about that um, from moving from last year into this year. So I think those things, discipline, set piece, and then we've just got to, we've just got to execute the opportunities that we create. Yeah, of course, your two first fives, Damien McKenzie for yourself and Richie Myler for the Crusaders, they're, they're superstars and, you know, they, they're almost uh, freestyle, aren't they, when when the ball comes loose? Is that how you guys approach it when the ball, if you get a turnover, you just got a licence to to go for it? Yeah, so obviously, like, for, as a defence, that's the hardest, um, hardest place to defend from when you're not connected and whatnot, so pretty much we're just... What we try to do is we're just trying to find the space um, wherever it is. We've got to reload and work hard um, to find that space and then try and communicate to get the ball there. Um, but yeah, Richie and Damo thrive on that stuff, so hopefully we can kind of, for us, um, not give them any sniffs like that and any freebies or um, disconnections that um, Richie can exploit, but um, I think we should be right on that area. What's the feeling of the players, uh, Alex, with the new law interpretations will the referees encourage to speed the game up by um, not having line out huddles or um, you know stop clocks on the penalties and are you are you pleased about that as a player yeah i think so like definitely attacking attacking um from the attacking perspective that opens up a lot of opportunity when teams get tired especially the big boys then that's when the gaps start to open up and um just for the backs like kind of get shiny eyes and um, love that stuff to try and try and break defences but probably the only other thing is just it makes it a lot harder at training and um, in the game to kind of stay with the pace of the game with only the short stoppages so we've been training like that um, for the last kind of since I've been in this year um, so yeah hopefully we're conditioned to it but definitely it's going to create an exciting brand of rugby um, I think there's going to be a lot more trials scored and a lot more exciting footy. Oh it's always it's always fantastic when you guys go at it and um, 
I know um, Wayne Smith told uh, the Black Ferns uh, we're not doing box kicks anymore. Uh, please tell me that Clayton's told you guys the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put a quite along that line. Because um, I think there's going to be um, some times in the game where you've got to try and use the ball you've got and reapply pressure, and that probably yeah. comes from those kind of contestable kicks. But yeah, working, I've done a little bit with um, Wayne I know, last year, um, and yeah, there's definitely the attitude just run, find the space, and um, exit through the the catch pass rather than kicking the ball away I'll ride it it's good stuff yeah it was good so I, I don't know how you I'm sure you boys felt the same as us that uh, watching the Black Ferns it, it was just sensational I mean it, it just reinvigorated my enthusiasm to watch rugby the way I love watching it being played ball in hand and what about were you guys just as excited as we were we non-players were yeah 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 of course um, that was pretty awesome to see especially Especially touch on Smith again going in there, having one year in the reins and um, producing what he did. Um, I guess it shows shows the kind of person he is and the coach that he is. Um, but yeah, it's the women's game was actually awesome to watch because of that. I reckon like throwing the ball around, being courageous, and um, it makes for an exciting game to watch as spectators. So, um, and I think for especially for women's rugby, kind of there's been a bit of talk over the um, kind of the last few years about it and. How, how they get it to, a, I guess, inc increase the brand of women's rugby. And I think that's just showed in um, the Black Ferns performance um, in women's rugby. So hopefully that, that just continues to grow for them. Yeah. Do you, does your team and the Chiefs Manawa women's team work together at any stage? Um, we, we have done a little bit, um, just the team team connecting. We went down to Sky City and did a bit of bowling. Um, and got to meet them and whatnot, which is pretty cool because last year the teams were very separated, um, probably mainly because of COVID um, being around and they were in their own bubble and whatnot, but it was cool to, cool to actually meet them and um, we're playing on the same franchise, so it's actually good to you know put a face to, uh, put a name to a face and um, do that. So there has been other opportunities, but um, I think just with the way because they, they, their um, camps are structured a bit differently, so they train over the weekend, or they have been last kind of few weeks, and we've been training during the week, so I think it makes it a bit tough, but um, yeah, it was, it was good to actually catch up with them this year. Yeah, well, not only myself, Alex, but most of my mates over here on the Gold Coast reckon you were desperately unlucky not to make the All Blacks last year. I'd, if they picked the team on form, you would have been in it, but you'd, you'd be pretty excited about your next move to Munster. Uh, you're too kind for that, mate. Um, yeah, I am really excited. Um, like I said to you just before we started, that it's always something I've wanted to do ever since I was young, kind of coming into the professional game. Um, there's so much opportunity for, for rugby players over overseas, not necessarily just to make money, but the opportunity to kind of challenge yourself in a different competition, um, travel, meet new people. Um, so that's something I've always wanted to do. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I'm glad it kind of got all finished up and confirmed kind of before the season started. So now I can just focus on doing my best for the Chiefs. But um, yeah, it's definitely motivated me to just keep keep it on and um, give my best for the Chiefs and then go on and make the most of the opportunity when the season's done. I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time out there. What a terrific side um, Islander. Uh, watched the Ireland-France game the other night. And it was a bit closer than the scoreline. Into mode of it, yeah. gee, they're, they're going to be a tough side to beat at the World Cup, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, even when they played the All Blacks last year, the brand of rugby they play, um, like it probably contradicts the stereotype of Northern Hemisphere and a set piece kick the ball. Like they're moving the ball, sw swinging with their backs, short passes, and you saw how the All Blacks struggled with, with the attack that they showed them. So they've, they've come a long way, um, and it's going to be an awesome World Cup this year with the with the competition there is at the moment with those international teams. And how cool uh, your former Tasman teammate, uh, James Lowe's a part of that. No doubt you'll catch up with him uh, when you get to Ireland. Yeah, yeah I'm sure I will. I, I need to send him a message actually and uh, find out the ins and outs of, of the move. But yeah, he's, he's he was, um, I think he was pretty unlucky to miss out on All Blacks. Um, I guess the nature of his position is always, always guys that are pretty sharp and, um, He's always dipped the outside back, so he, but he's, it's awesome to see he's made the most of his opportunity over there and he's 
playing some outstanding rugby for Ireland. Um, so that's cool to see. Um, and I'll be supporting them, um, even if it's against the Licks. But yeah, it'd be cool. Good stuff. Well, Alex, all the very best uh, for Friday night and for the rest of the season. And um, we hope to catch up with you on a reasonably regular basis through the season. We've absolutely famous yep. have adopted the Chiefs as our uh, team for the season, even though we're from Crusaders country. We're, <laughs> we're Chiefs this year, and um, I hope you go well. I'm sure uh, Friday night will be an absolute cracker. Yeah, I'm sure it will, mate. Thank you very much. Um, appreciate you taking us under your wing as the Chiefs and supporting us. Um, yeah, it's good to catch up with you again, mate. Hope yep. we can do it again soon. Awesome.